Hi, so this is Stephen O'Grady. I'm the co-founder of Redmonk. Uh, we are here today to talk about uh, GE Predex and more importantly, what it is. Uh, and to do that, I'd like to introduce Jason. Uh, Jason, do you want to uh, go into your background a little bit? Sure. Yeah, I am a uh, developer evangelist. Uh, again, my name is Jason Delancey. Uh, I've been with GE a little over a year uh, prior to being a developer evangelist. I was a full-time software developer uh, working for companies like Rackspace and Cloud Computing, uh, DreamWorks Animation, making cartoons. Uh, and now uh, with GE, uh, we're working on uh, heavy industrial uh, settings, which yeah. is very interesting. Indeed. it's it's. Uh, I always enjoy the conversations with GE because they're not like any of the other conversations that we have. Um, but we, I don't want to spoil it. So uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about the platform? Um, you know, How would you describe it to somebody who's never heard of it? Um, what is it? Yeah, so uh, Predix uh, we describe as the industrial internet platform that helps connect data from physical assets to powerful analytics. So by doing that, it's solving some of the industrial concerns at a platform as a service layer mm -hmm. so that developers can focus on building internet enabled applications, knowing that we've taken care of some of those heavy lifting things. Right. And so when I say physical assets, you know, for, for GE at least, that's things like, um, you know, we like to say the things that move, cure, build, and power to the world, right? But uh, assets are really any high value thing. So abstractly, like a machine, like a wind turbine, a commercial building, a car or a city. Um, we're not involved in every industry. Uh, and it is a very generic platform in the sense of handling industrial settings. Yeah, yeah, indeed. And you know, when you when you say pass, it's, it's built on Cloud Foundry, is that correct? Uh, that is correct. Um, so I mean, if you go to uh, Predix.io, uh, right on the front page, we do have a white paper, mm -hmm. so that when you load that white paper, uh, you can kind of see, um, you know, I, I refer to it as a, a market architecture, but, you know, <laughs> it is at a very high level what some of the components are uh, that are part of the platform uh, to give you an idea that, yeah, it is based on Cloud Foundry uh, and a number of high value uh, assets or microservices that we build on top of it that are uh, hardened for end-to-end -end security, but are really intended for uh, this IoT and an industrial IoT space. Yep. Yeah. So essentially, you know, you, you've you've taken you know a variety of open source components and you know certainly things that you built, wrapped them up, and created a platform. Um, you know, which is which is great. So uh, the the one of the big questions that we wanted to get into is who's it for? You know, what's the kind of um, you know user who who's the target for this platform? Yeah, so I'm in developer relations, so I do look at things through the lens of a developer, not necessarily a buyer. Right. Uh, so, um, but one thing I like to think about is that I define developer maybe a little bit differently. Uh, so, like some of the people I, I've tried to help understand predicts and use predicts, you know, it's I'm thinking of like the turbo machinery engineer in Moscow I talked to, or the water plant supervisor in Ghana, yeah. the material science engineer in Indiana. So, they don't necessarily have a developer title. Um, but they are spending maybe half of their day working in code or trying to build solutions. They just may not have a computer science degree, but still want to be able to do useful work. Uh, so I think that is my kind of target audience, people who uh, are in an industrial setting or want to be uh, and can make use of these services. Indeed. And as I said, that's a, that's a perfect example of the fact that the, the conversations I have with GE are not the conversations we have with other companies. Um, yeah. So like, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to just say, like, I mean, on, on the website, I mean, we kind of, you know, boil that down to maybe three different types of roles. Right. Developers, like I said, it's very broad, but mm -hmm. data scientists and controls engineers as well, yeah. who um, can leverage this data set, leverage uh, the knowledge that we have about machines um, and, and design solutions. Outstanding. All right. So, like, let's dive in a little bit. What are some concrete examples of, of you know, things that people can do with the platform? Yeah. So uh, I, again, I'm kind of continuing down to our main site to sort of highlight a few of the things we have. And we do highlight a particular uh, case study here. Um, and if you go uh, take a look at this case study, you know, from a business standpoint, it's just saying, hey, we got on an airplane. If the flight is delayed, that is a costly thing for the airlines, right? They don't want to be delayed. Uh, and so if we bring, you know, the platform to bear on it, what can we do about it? And so actually this is... Um, a case study that was done by a partner organization. So uh, they kind of came in and said, these services are valuable and use that to build out a solution. Uh, and this sort of walks through what some of those interfaces might look like. Okay. Uh, and this is for baggage, you know, uh, for just airline um, landing gear performance. 
Um, but there are a lot of cases in aviation or oil and gas um, that uh, we, we're trying to document and, and expose so that people can understand what they're all about. So what is the platform actually, you know, okay, perfect. Uh, you know, here's the exact segue. So in terms of looking at, um, you know, the reference example here, can you walk us through exactly what it's doing? Yeah, so um, so this is a reference application, uh, which if you go on Predicts.io under, um, you know, resources, there's a link that'll take you right to the reference application uh, and gives you the login and password. So you can go and sort of experiment yourself. You know, here uh, I'm, you know, this is about a refinery in Richmond. I am not an oil and gas uh, domain specialist. So a lot of this doesn't have a whole lot of meaning to me, but I can look at it and say, okay, somebody who's making decisions wants to see data over time. Yep. They want to have a graph and be able to, you know, tweak a few things, modify a few dates. Um, and, and that's a common thing, right? I want a dashboard. I want to look at data and be able to look at the data and run analytics. And the nice thing about this is we've actually documented it out through this about. So. Um, by going through here, you can kind of see what the core services are, how it was designed, and how they interact with each other. Yeah, outstanding. Yeah, and uh, microservices are certainly in vogue right now, so it's good to it's good to see that the, the platform certainly support, supports those as an approach. And I have to imagine that you know, with uh, that's an approach that lends itself particularly well, you know, to the IoT world. You know, where you're dealing with tons and tons of, in many cases, very lightweight devices, uh, or at least yeah. lightweight sensors in in larger devices. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So, do you have some examples uh, of exactly how a developer would use this um, uh, demo for us? Yeah, I can. Uh, I can show a few things. So, um, you know, the easiest thing to do is uh, when you go to Predicts.io, you can sign up for an account, and I've already kind of logged in here. Um, but what you're able to do is go and browse the catalog and select which services are interest to you. And many of them actually have a, uh, a free sort of demo uh, plan so that you can explore and kind of kick the tires and get a feel for how it works. Um, you know, so like here, you know, like if I'm interested in time series data, you know, it is just a service that allows me to consume and, and ingest data into a, a time series database. Um, UAA is our user account authorization. So again, for security and user management. So you can kind of just go through this catalog, pick the things that are valuable to you. Uh, some of them are open source. Some of them are contributed by uh, third party partners. Uh, and some of them have been built out by our own platform team. So there is a variety of things here it, it really is about um, sort of this larger ecosystem of developers who are interested or passionate sure. about making a global impact to industry yeah, um, and to, yeah. yeah so you have a, a variety of, of then um, of services as you said that you've built but also with with standard um, uh, pieces you know rabbit Postgres um, you know obviously the you know, cloud foundry foundation that we talked about earlier you know so they're you know mm -hmm. even for you know inbound developers who are not familiar with the platform at least they're going to be familiar with you know many of the pieces that you use in it Yes. Yes. It. Okay. Um, and any any demos? Can you show us um, uh, something on command line, perhaps? Um, yeah, I could do that. So, uh, like I was demonstrating, most of it you can do um, on the console, but I mean, a lot of it is available on the command line too. Um, when you do a a Cloud Foundry login, um, uh, you know, you can see. Uh, what services, you know, so this is sort of the corollary of what I was just showing in the console. I can look at the services I have, I can interact with them. I can um, run a Cloud Foundry Marketplace command and get a list of all of the services that are available to me to use. Yeah, and so again, this is just a, um, a different view, uh, which helps with scripting things um, when you want to automate a setting up a space, doing a few operations, ingesting data, tearing it down, maybe you're replicating the server, um, and those number of things. Um, and so, you know, I can script very, you know, simply things like creating a lot of these services, tearing them down, how to use them, uh, and things like that. Yeah. Um, you know, like here's just a very simple Python example where I'm randomly generating temperature data and then storing it in a time series instance. And I can just keep, you know, building out more and more data um, to build a simulator possibly. Uh, if I don't have a, um, a wind turbine in my backyard, I might need to simulate some data for a little while, at least to test it and make sure I handle different scenarios. That seems like a pretty reasonable approach. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's always not, I mean, it's 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 nice to have, uh, to support both, you know, sort of ends of it, right? You know, because you'll have people coming in who say, you know, look, the only thing I want to use here is a, is a web interface, but, you know, from a developer population, 
standpoint, you know, everybody wants to get to the command line as quick as possible, at least in my experience. Yeah, um, because yeah it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's automating, it's replicating and being able, you know, to reproduce what I did last time and to have somebody else reproduce it. <laughs> I think it certainly is valuable. Well, and many of us have probably been taught over the course of our careers not to trust the, the web front end, but to always trust the uh, CLI. So it's good to see that. And it's certainly good, you know, this is, uh, as I mentioned before, this is, you know, a lot of this is going to be familiar, I think, to, to folks that have some background or exposure to Cloud Foundry. Um, you know, which is helpful because uh, this is a wrapper for the, your CLI is a wrapper for the Cloud Foundry, is that correct? Uh, we do have um, a, a tool, uh, a PX command line utility, mm -hmm. which does allow for easy creation of a lot of these services and setting up some of that, uh, the details around user management. Um, you know, much like getting an API key for certain services, we use UAA, which is part of the Cloud Foundry platform for uh, identifying clients and client secrets for who can access and what privileges and what uh, right. scopes is uh, the term they would use in terms of what you're able to do once you do connect to a service. Oh, perfect. Well, cool. This has been, as I said, it's been a, it's been a quick intro. Um, you know, I think the yep. way that I would sum it up and, you know, you correct me if I'm wrong here is, is that, you know, basically you have a, a platform uh, that is, you know, composed and, and built of and includes a variety of different open source services along with proprietary pieces, you know, that are more specific to, to this, you know, this use case, uh, the developers can come in and, and build things quickly and easily and manage them. Um, is that a reasonable summary? Absolutely, yeah. Outstanding. Cool, well, I appreciate the time, Jason. Uh, thanks so much. Yeah, no, this was great, thank you.